Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Out of the Short Box. Uh, this is a impromptu uh, little uh, edition that I felt led to do. Uh, so I hope you all enjoy uh, today's podcast. Uh, if you hear a little bit of background noise, it's because I'm currently driving. I just uh, picked up uh, my comic books. Uh, thanks to a dear friend of mine, I was able to uh, get those uh, and uh, get caught up on those. So it's going to be a, a good time, good read. Uh, which reminded me, you know, visit your local comic book shop. Uh, watch my YouTube channel uh, here in a little bit. Just look up Josiah McComas on YouTube, and I'll be right there. Uh, but I'm going to upload a video that I actually took at the comic book shop because I want to show you all that the comic book shops are a lot more than just uh, comic books. Uh, I show you a little bit of the inside of uh, Comics to Games located in Florence, Kentucky, which is uh, the comic book shop that I go to. Uh, speaking of that, uh, the guys there that uh, vol- that uh, work uh, for my Contessa, who own the store, uh, they have their own podcast too, so look them up. I'm always willing to support other podcasts. It's called uh, Comic uh, Book Shop Irregulars. Comic Book Shop Irregulars. Uh, I've already listened to one podcast. Uh, they're a good bunch of guys that uh, just have a good time uh, talking about comics and, and pop culture. So uh, give them guys a shout. Uh, and uh, listen to their podcast as well. So I just wanted to talk about the world in comic books right now. So because it's an interesting uh, little... We've had a big week in comic books. So Captain Marvel and the movie theaters has done well. Uh, his broken box office records. Uh, Kevin Feige announced that Captain Marvel will be the strongest character in the MCU. Um, so going into the next phase, uh, we'll, we'll definitely be seeing more of Captain Marvel and, and Brie Larson, uh, which which has me wondering, though, because, uh, spoiler alert if you haven't watched the movie, so if you haven't watched the movie, this won't ruin it for you, but uh, j- just don't, because it does have details about the movie. Um, so Monica Rambeau was introduced to us in, in the Captain Marvel movie. Uh, I'm going to talk about that because she's, she's different than the comic book. Uh, I love the comic book rendition of Monica Rambeau, uh, who took the title Captain Marvel. Uh, was actually given to her by The Thing, a uh, little known fact uh, for you all. He's the one that actually called her Captain Marvel. Um, but Monica Rambeau, in the comic book, had a strong uh, support system with her father. Her father was a single father who raised uh, Monica, and I thought that would have been such an awesome, touching thing to see a single father uh, raising their child. Um, but they didn't do that in the movie. They've just got Monica as a single mother raising a child, which I can understand that. But, uh, man, in a, in a culture that we had today, wouldn't it be awesome to see a, a single father uh, raising a child and see the importance of a father in a, a young woman's life? But, you know, it's, it's all the directors. That's what they get paid for. And, again, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is different from the comic books. Uh, they've stated that many, uh, many times. So, uh, but yeah, so we've had that happen. A lot of Captain Marvel stuff has come out. It, it hit the ground running. Uh, but let's talk about the comic book. Uh, well, I'll mention one more thing about the movie. So, uh, James Gunn. Uh, James Gunn is back uh, for doing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Number 3. Uh, for Disney has reinstated him, made the announcement official. And uh, James Gunn made the announcement official as well. When it first came out, some fans were... Uh, kind of worried because Warner Brothers had snatched him up for Suicide Squad for the next installment of Suicide Squad, but it looks like uh, they've made an arrangement uh, to where uh, he'll be able to do both movies, that he'll fulfill his contract with Warner Brothers for uh, Suicide Squad, and then and then he'll uh, have uh, the Avengers, I mean, I'm sorry, the Guardians of the Galaxy movie done. And some people were, you know, some people were shocked by that. Some people... You know, I know that, uh, or my friends put up on their Facebook, on their tweets, uh, that uh, they were uh, shocked that, you know, some were jubilated. I mean, a lot of them were happy that this happened, uh, but some of them were shocked. They were like, wow. And uh, I remember when uh, James Gunn was let go. A lot of people at my work asked me what I thought of him being let go, and I stated that he would be back. Um, And the reason why is it's all about money. I mean, when it boils down to a lot of this stuff, uh, I think some people forget that. And it's awesome to think about the righteous side uh, of the media industry. Um, and it's definitely there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's 
uh, there's no uh, inherent uh, you know cultural value to it. If there wasn't, I wouldn't be doing a podcast about it. But uh, you know, people think that you know. Oh, they're doing it on principle. No, no. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Disney or DC Comics or Marvel Comics or Valiant Comics or any of these other ones. You're not doing it based on a principle. Uh, you know, even Alternate Comics, it sells their uh, comics for like a dollar ninety nine. You know, it's still that they still want to make a dollar. You know, Peter Semetti and them ain't out there to to go broke. They, they started a comic book company, a publishing company, because they want to make money. I mean, it, it'd be foolish to start one uh, for the sole purpose of, of 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 not doing anything. They're they're making money off of it, uh, and that's what Disney's going to do too. Disney's going to go where the money is. They knew that they needed. Uh, Mr. Gunn for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. They knew they needed the backlash they got after they fired him. Uh, They realized they were losing a cash cow. Uh, They understood that they needed to keep the series going as it was for the continuity. Kevin Feige knew all this. Um, The reason why I believe uh, they let him go during the scandal that he had, and and I'm not justifying what James Gunn did. What he did was horrible. I mean, he, he should have never, ever said those things. Um, you know, and I'm glad he apologized for it and, and made amends for it. But uh, um, here, here, here's the thing, and, and I think Disney knew this all along. Uh, they, they did it from a corporate advantage. So they've been working on this deal with Fox for ages, which finally closed this week. So see another big, big news topic here. You know, uh, Fox, uh, Fox 20. 21st Century Fox is what they call themselves now. 21st Century Fox and Disney finally finalized the deal, giving Disney the properties for the 21st Century movies. Uh, not the television shows, not the uh, Fox uh, Fox News, uh, that type, but they do uh, receive now the controlling portion of Hulu, and they also have uh, the movies uh, to their uh, to their rights as well. Uh, so that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. We'll, we'll finally get the X Men and the Fantastic Four, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, yay! Uh, but Mr. Gunn. So here's the thing: Disney wanted to make sure that the deal with Fox went through, and they knew uh, that uh, with Fox's uh, uh, certain values upheld and 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 all that that they knew if they had this gentleman under contract that there would be a delay. I don't think that they ever thought that Fox would ever pull out from it, uh, but I believe that Disney thought there would be a longer delay than already was. Um, the time for Fox to come in is a little later than Disney wanted on their timeline, but it's still close enough. Uh, they did want to close the deal before the last Avengers movie in this current phase was launched, and they succeeded in that. I think they wanted it a little earlier, uh, but I... Uh, but I knew they wanted it closed, and I've got a theory behind that as well. I think we're going to see some of them Fox properties at the end of Endgame. Uh, they still have some time to, to do a little bit, a couple of final shoots or final edits, which I think they already made the shots on the characters they want, uh, but was just waiting for the right time to edit them in. And I think we'll get that at the very end of the movie. Um, I very much believe that we're going to see some form or hint of Galactus in the Avengers Endgame. Um, I also uh, I also believe that we'll see the Silver Surfer in some way, shape, or form, and I think that's just a Marvel uh, hindsight. And I'll, I'll I'll tell you why I think that too, uh, supported even from the comic book world. So Marvel right now is being very strategic with their properties. Uh, while the comic books are a separate entity, um, they are. Uh, they're aligning themselves with the movies a little bit. Now, I know you're going to say, well, the Avengers is completely different. I know that. I know, and I know there's different storylines and everything else like that, but if you look at the characters themselves, uh, how they're drawn, how they're uh, reflected in the comic books, even though they're different storylines, uh, they've taken the similarities very much to the movies. Uh, you know, Thor is, is, is drawn very much similar to... Uh, Chris Hemsworth, you know, Tony Stark is is Tony. Um, 
you know, the, the only thing that's different right now is with the Incredible Hulk, uh, which I think they have their reasonings behind that, too, with the deal with Universal and everything. Uh, I don't think they want to mirror as much of that as they can. Um, but even Black Widow. Black Widow has her own solo title, and she's been re- redone to look very much. Black Panther um, has has been done to, to, to match the, his movie counterpart, um, so we, we see that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that they're starting to line uh, some of that stuff up. Gamora, uh, Peter Quill, you know, I can name time and time where they're starting to mirror, uh, at least the images, maybe not storyline, but the images are starting to mirror themselves in the comic books. So with that being said, uh, let me tell you, I believe Galactus is going to be the next big bad in the next phase, which makes sense. They need to introduce Galactus into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, that opens many doors for him. It opens the doors to get the Fantastic Four in there full force to, to run with some uh, Fantastic Four movies, uh, which also introduce other big bads as well. Um, and it just it sets up a lot of stuff, and, it, and it'll even help set up the X-Men uh, in there. Uh, but uh, but I really do uh, think that at the towards the end of Avengers Endgame uh, that we're also going to see uh, an appearance of the Silver Surfer, and Donny Cates uh, announced uh, along with Marvel uh, that the Marvel has uh, signed him on to begin a Silver Surfer series in the comic books. Uh, so that has been announced and will come out here in the next few months. Uh, so I don't, I do not believe that's coincidence. Uh, they've already got the artwork. It looks like from what I've seen on Donnie's uh, on Donnie's site and Donnie's Twitter. Uh, so I highly, highly believe that uh, we're going to see uh, the Silver Surfer in Avengers Endgame, and I think it'll be towards the end of the movie. I think he'll be the Herald of Galactus, and he'll show up announcing uh, Galactus is coming. Uh, and I think it'll be, I think it'll mirror the first Avengers movie where we saw the grin from Thanos. Uh, I believe they'll end the same movie with maybe a grin or a staunch look from Galactus peering down upon Earth as he approaches after his herald has announced his coming. So uh, that's the news that we got from there. Emerald City Comic Con is going on right now. Uh, we're getting into that heavy Comic Con uh, season, uh, which is awesome. But Emerald City Comic Con is going on r- right now uh, with some of theirs. I know we got Raleigh Comic Con uh, about to head up in, in the Carolinas. And, uh, of course, we have Lexington Comic Con happening next week here here in uh, the area where I am at. Uh, there's also Horror Hound, uh, which is going on in uh, Cincinnati at the Sharonville Convention Center this weekend, actually. Uh, Elvira is going to be there. I was really hoping that maybe I could have gone and gotten uh, Cassandra to sign some of my Elvira comics that I've talked to you all about, but it doesn't look like uh, my health and, and my family situation is going to allow me. But that's okay. I'll catch Cassandra again. So I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to catch her sometime. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's been an exciting week in, in comic books. Just a, a big-time uh, exciting week uh, uh, for that. Uh, a lot of good titles. Uh, of course, uh, Marvel starting their War of the Realms, which... I have a little bit of... Uh, I'm really excited for the story. I think the storyline's going to be good. Um, I just don't like how Marvel's marketing the book. Um, and I've, y'all have heard me get on that tangent before. I don't believe I need to buy like 22 or 23 different issues from uh, different titles in order to read one storyline. Uh, I, just, I, I just don't. Um, but, you know, hey, Marvel's a publisher, and that's how they're trying to make money. And they're being a little desperate at it, you know. I think DC is is stronger as a publisher right now. Their writing's better. Speaking of DC, let me talk about DC. It was announced today. I don't think he wanted it announced today. I think he wanted it, it to be held off, but the cat uh, that cat got out of the bag. But um, uh, Brian Hitch, who has uh, been the artist on Hawkman, uh, he uh, announced that he will not be. Um, with Hawkman anymore past issue number 12, which is kind of a bummer because, man, Hawkman's been great with Robert Vendetti uh, and, and, and Brian Hitch doing the, the doing the covers. It's been some of the, the best uh, that I've seen. Okay, so uh, 
I'm back. Uh, took a little break there for a minute there in the cutoff. So, but yeah, so Brian Hitch will no longer be doing Hawkman. Um, which, like I said, if you've been following the series, Brian's done some excellent work uh, with the artistry on it. Um, about Hawkman number 10, it was just phenomenal. Um, so I'm sad to see him go, but I'm kind of excited to see who will be brought on next. As of now, I know Robert Vendetta's, Vendetti is still writing uh, the comic. I haven't heard of any writer changes, and I hope that maintains as well. I do hope DC keeps Hawkman going. Uh, it's it, This is the best Hawkman run I've seen since the history of Hawkman. Uh, Robert Vendetti's been able to actually pull uh, the convoluted origin stories together into one precise one that I think DC, DC should, def, should definitely make canon. Uh, he's been able to take uh, the, the many uh, origin stories of Carter Hall or Qatar Hall and, and was able to put them all into one. Um, you know, even, you know, with being the Earth version of Carter Hall uh, back in Egypt, early Egypt, to uh, uh, having uh, the Qatar Hall from Thanagar. He was able to pull all of them together and to give us an origin which makes sense, uh, which actually a- a- adds to the DC universe in a good way, uh, one that uh, uh, really opens some doors for some writers uh, to get inventive uh, with some of their pre- their backstories, some of these characters' backstories. Uh, so from a writer's perspective, I really hope DC uh, decides to keep Hawkman going. Uh, or, and if they don't keep him going, I hope to see his appearance at least in Justice League. Uh, we have Hawk Girl in Justice League uh, right now, uh, but uh, there has yet to be an appearance of Hawkman. Uh, well, as of today that I know of, I, I've still got to read this uh, last current uh, entry um, in, in, in the run. Um, so, yeah, so we've got some exciting stuff going on in, in comic books right now. Now's a good time to be a comic book fan. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what else we had uh, going on. Like I said, I'm driving right now, so I'm, try- I'm actually talking about this stuff off the top of my head. Um, follow Gail Simone's Twitter. I want to tell you all that. Gail is, uh, even if you don't like Gail, uh, Gail's influenced so many uh, different people. She had a, a sweet little girl. Uh, well, a father posted a picture and, and, and tweeted at Gail. But the sweet little girl loves uh, Gail Simone, and uh, she wrote a letter to Gail. And she created her own comic book character, and she wrote down the origin story on a poster board. And then the father took a picture of it uh, with the girl holding it and sent it to Gail. And uh, we have had an outpouring. Gail called on the comic book community to come up with some artwork uh, for this little girl and her superhero character. And I got to tell you, that little girl had a, had a good idea. She had a good idea for a female superhero. And uh, I, I think with Gail's influence and, and Valiant Comics, who y'all have heard me love Valiant, Valiant stepped up to the plate and said, hey, when her comic is is done, uh, we want to look at it. Uh, so uh, that that would be awesome, make this little girl's uh, dream, uh, dream come true. And bravo for her father. Uh, bravo, bravo for her father just encouraging her, uh, his little girl uh, to get into the comic book world, which I really want to encourage some of you all uh, to do. Uh, if your kid has some art, artistic talent uh, or storytelling abilities, have them look into this industry. Um, there's some falsities out there. There's just some soured uh, people in the comic book industry uh, that will try to, to feed that you can't make a living in the comic book industry, but you absolutely can. Uh, there's others out there who do it, who love it, you can see it, and they make a good living. They do what they do. Um, even these guys that go out on their own and do like the Indiegogo are making a lot of money with comic books. If you tell a good story... Uh, people will read it and people will get it. That's just principle. It's been that way for a long time. People gravitate to stories. That's why stories and myths are so popular. We gravitate to those things because they tell us who we are and we escape to them. So, man, what a week in comic books. Just, wow. Uh, building them. Oh, yeah, the Avengers Endgame trailer came out, too, and that was that was awesome. Uh, showed the quantum suits and everything. All oh, my other theory, I forgot to tell you. So I think two definite characters will come in. Everyone knows Adam Warlock. That's been hinted at in almost every single, well, it did in every one of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxies. We were hinted at Adam Warlock coming into uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and, and I, he will. I, he'll come in the endgame. He's one of Thanos's. uh 
biggest, uh, you know, adversaries. So I think we'll definitely see Adam Warlock uh, in Avengers Endgame. And then I honestly think we're going to see Howard the Duck. That was one that caught some of my friends off gear. But uh, Howard's been teased in both of them as well, uh, both of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And um, and the reason why I say that is twofold. Number one, uh, most of Howard's, even though they're you know people look at them as corny stories, and they are, they were made for you to laugh. But uh, Howard's premise has always been he's had a tie to the whole cosmic thing and also to a little bit of time travel and also the whole quantum. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the quantum realm was actually tied to Howard the Duck, if you read some of the classic stuff. And that's why I think Howard's going to be uh, in in the movie. I don't think they would have wasted the CGI just to give us fan service. Uh, I know Marvel does that sometimes, but... Uh, I really uh, think that they um, they did this uh, well this time because I think that uh, Howard the Duck is, is, will be an end game, Avengers end game, and uh, that's a rare theory. We'll see. And I, I'm always wrong on these things. <laughs> I think I know what they're going to do, and I don't. But I, I think it happened. I, I mean, I could see how it could happen. I can make a case for it at least. So, what an exci- exciting time to be a comic book fan. What an exciting time uh, just to be there. So I want to thank you all. I want to take this time to personally thank you all for listening to the podcast. Uh, I love you, and I do. I love all my fans. For those of you all that reach out to me uh, through our email and through our Facebook page, I, I can't, I can't adore you enough. Um, you know, uh, with everything I'm battling in my life right now, this podcast means a lot to me. It's a, it's a way for me to kind of get some stuff off my chest and to talk about the thing I love. So I love you all. Again, remember to visit uh, my buddies at the Comics to Games. Go uh, support them if you're local here in the Cincinnati area, the Northern Kentucky Cincinnati area. Uh, Listen to to the podcast Comic Shop Irregulars. uh, Very uh, Comic Book Shop Irregulars. I'm sorry, Comic Book Shop Irregulars. Uh, You can find them on iTunes. Uh, I just looked them up through Google and they popped right up. Uh, So um, definitely... uh, take a listen to their podcast uh they're good guys and uh they're they're fun and relaxed and i loved listening to what they were doing with their podcast if you like what i'm doing on here uh you know go visit our facebook page uh, facebook.com backslash out of the short box um and you can uh, like us there. I've got interesting facts that I post on the Facebook page every day. Uh, I have one come out. I schedule those ahead of time, and they come out. I do try to post up new news on that page as well so to keep you all up to date with the comic book world. Um, also, uh, visit our Patreon, patreon.com backslash all the short box. If you want to support us, we're there. You can follow me on Twitter at McComas Josiah and uh, share this. Uh, look us up on YouTube as well under Josiah McComas. And like I said, I'll have a video of me at the local comic book shop there here posted shortly. So I love you all. Thanks again for listening and uh, can't wait to see you again. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs>